We just spent a day in Hollywood Studios. Here's what we did. We only spent one day in this park, so in order to make the most of it, we did the following. Stayed at a Disney resort, which enables you to enter the park 30 minutes before it opens to all other guests. We purchased Genie Plus and woke up early to book a Lightning Lane as soon as possible. This can significantly cut down the time you spend waiting in lines. For select high demand rides, you can purchase an individual Lightning Lane, which is an added cost, but in my opinion, worth it. We also used the free My Disney Experience app to order food ahead of time, like when we were in line for a ride. I would say this app is a must use for planning your day and getting around. We stayed at Pop Century Resort, which includes access to the Skyliner for free transportation to this park. Buses are not available to this park at this resort. FYI. This method saved us the cost of an Uber, but we did have to wait in line for about 20 minutes, which made us a little later to the park than I had anticipated. When we arrived at the park, we still had about 10 minutes of early access, so we walked right on by those waiting in line for the regular park hours and headed straight to Star Wars Land. By opting to ride Star Wars Rise of the Resistance early in the day, we claimed a rare 30 minute standby line. During the day, the standby line can be, I don't know, a couple of hours. This ride is my personal favorite in this park. So in addition to using an early standby line, we purchased a single-use lightning lane for later in the day. Recruits, thank you for joining the cause. A covert resistance team led by my friend Fig has infiltrated a First Order Star Destroyer. Next, we stepped next door to claim our first Genie Plus Lightning Lane at Star Wars Smuggler's Run. This ride has slightly different interactions depending on where you sit in the ride, which makes it a good one to try more than once. This time, we got to be the pilots, and up front behind the uh, flying joystick steering wheel thing, whatever it's called, it really feels like you're flying a spacecraft. Quite enjoyable. To get the most out of Genie Plus, you need to remember that you can book a new lightning lane every two hours or right after redeeming one, whichever comes first. This means when I checked in for Smuggler's Run, I was then able to book the next lightning lane. In the meantime, we went on Star Tours. It was about 11.15 a.m. and the standby line was less than 10 minutes. In fact, all day the wait for this ride seemed to be relatively low. I don't know how common that is, but we were there on a less busy day. You can check an online Disney crowd calendar to plan your visit around less busy times. In any case, I really enjoyed Star Tours. It had a fun little storyline and immersive effects. Our next stop was Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular Show. We hadn't planned to see this show, so we arrived a little bit late, but they still let us in because there was plenty of seating. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I ended up enjoying this attraction quite a bit. There was action, stunts, special effects, and even some jokes. If you haven't seen it, I intentionally didn't film the best parts of it so as to not spoil it. There's scene changes and stunts that are really cool. Go check it out for yourself. From there, we hopped over to my wife's favorite ride of the park, using a lightning lane for Hollywood Tower of Terror. I don't know if you or someone you know is afraid of heights, but this guy is right here. That's why I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed this ride. I left wishing that it was longer. My advice, don't skip this ride. By now it was almost one o'clock and we were quite hungry. So using the My Disney Experience mobile app, we ordered food for a quick pickup. The hamburgers, fries, and chicken nuggets at Rosie's All-American Cafe were delicious. With our bellies full, we wanted to go somewhere to relax, so we wandered on over to Muppet Vision 3D. I had seen this show once before, last year, but was eager to share the experience with my wife. 
Its practical effects, costumes, audio animatronics, and 3D effects make for a funny and inventive show. After this, we had some time to spare before our next lightning lane for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Whale Ray. We had done most of our high priority rides, though we still wanted to go on Slinky Dog's Dash and we're hoping to get a lightning lane for it. Stay tuned on how that went. <laughs> for now, we explored areas of the park that we hadn't really been to yet. We considered meeting Chewbacca, but didn't quite have the time to spare to wait in line for that. So we stepped over to the Beauty and the Beast live on stage, which was a great show. I believe it's about a 30 minute version of the, of the movie with singing and dancing and costumes. Very enjoyable, I would recommend it. Afterwards, we stopped for a quick treat and grabbed one of my all time favorite desserts, ice cream. We were eager to ride with Mickey Mouse and friends, but unfortunately we had to loiter for a few minutes because you can't redeem your lightning lane before your time slot unless, and here's a helpful secret, you're only five minutes early, then they'll let you in. I love the new Mickey Mouse cartoons and the new trackless rides at these parks are always so creative, so I quite enjoyed this ride. Probably another one of my favorites for this park. I would say this one is a must see. The only other ride I really wanted to go on was the Stinky Dog, as I said, and this is where it got tricky. It had run out of lightning lane passes on Genie Plus because we had waited too long to pick it. So we had to wait in a standby line, and this was by far our longest wait of the day at an hour and 30 minutes. It was still worth it for this simple but enjoyable roller coaster. Even though we had to wait a while, the queue was very interesting. The props are great. I, don't, I would love to know how they made these life-size toys and whatnot, but they were spot on and really made us feel like we were seeing the world from a toy's perspective. Sticking with the Toy Story theme, we used our last lightning lane on Toy Story Mania, where you get to move around, shoot things, and uh, get a high score, and just enjoy the general Toy Story environment. A good one for guests of all ages. At this point, it was about six o'clock, and we made our way to Star Wars Land, where we got a little treat, the classic blue milk from Star Wars. Didn't know what it was gonna be like, but it was kind of fruity and had a coconut taste. It was quite refreshing. We took it to go, got in line for take two of Rise of the Resistance, such a fun ride. We did find out though, that they won't let you take it on the ride. We had to finish the drink before we got to the next cast member in the queue, but there was enough time. Before heading over to the Fantasmic show, which we wanted to arrive early to, to ensure that we got a seat because it is a popular attraction. We first, we stopped for one of our favorite Disneyland treats, both my wife and I. It's a Mickey Mouse shaped pretzel. They're very good. This one was a little too salty, but we could, you can just like scrape off some of the extra salt, um, dip it in cheese, yummy treat. Um, regarding Fantasmic, I'm gonna be honest, there were some parts of it that were kind of slow for me but it was made up for with some cool character appearances, some uh, action on stage, good music, and some surprising water effects. I have never seen water being used as a screen for projectors before. So that is our day in Hollywood Studios. If you can, take advantage of early entry, Genie Plus, and other paid lightning lanes. I would recommend all the rides that we did get a go on, especially if it's your first time in the park. None of them were disappointing. The park has some great snacks and dining, I think we missed dinner here because we had plenty of snacks throughout the day that kept us kept us going, gave us energy, but um, it also gave us more time, so that was nice. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or your own tips to share. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember to smile. <laughs>